Hello and welcome to lecture 8 in Mathematics for Engineering 2. Uh, today we are going to learn a few more uh, tests for serious convergence. So we are going to talk about comparison test, ratio test and root test. So um, what is the comparison test? So the comparison test um, is about, well, the idea here is as follows. If we know whether some series with terms B and converges or diverges, and we know whether an unknown series with terms A n, whether it is bigger or smaller than B, then we can uh, make a co conclusion about the, the series A, right? Now, um, the intuition is, is, is as follows. So notice that uh, in the comparison test, we are working with series of positive terms, right? So um, both a n and b n are well strictly positive. Actually, they don't have to be exactly positive, so they could be bigger than or equal to zero. Um, so then, the if you think of partial sums of both series, right? So if you think of partial sum of, say, uh, the, the series A, A n, which is A1 plus A2 plus and so on, plus until A n. And, and, and the same for, for B, B1 plus B2 plus and so on, plus B n. Then, um, so if you look at the, these partial sums, so every next partial sum is obtained by adding a non-negative number. So, and adding a non-negative number makes it bigger, right? So, which means that sequences of partial sums of series with positive terms are increasing. Right? So, both sequences A n and, and B n are increasing. And if you have an increasing sequence, then basically uh, there are just two alternatives. So, the, the sequence, if a sequence in increases, then it can either have a finite limit or it can have an infinite limit, right? So it cannot really go um, back and forth between like negative one and one or something like that, right? So it cannot oscillate because it is increasing. And the idea here is that um, if the series BN converges, then it means that its partial sums are approach some finite limit. And the partial sums of the second series A n are even smaller than partial sums of the series B n, so they cannot grow to infinity, right? Because you know they are bounded from above by something something finite, so they should be even smaller than the sum of the series B n. So, which means that if B n converges, then so does A n, if A n is smaller. But on, on the other hand, if uh, A n is bigger than BN and BN diverges, well, then diverges means that its sum is essentially infinity, right? And AN is even bigger. So, and if it is even bigger than infinity, then basically it's got to be infinity too, right? Uh, so th that's the um, intuition behind the, the, this comparison test, right? Um, and the tricky part about applying the comparison test is to know which series you need to compare yours to. Uh, before looking into examples, so let me quickly go through the proof of the comparison test. So uh, as I said, if both series have positive terms, then both partial sums are increasing, right? So, so which means that we could hypothetically apply the monotone convergence theorem, right? So according to the monotone convergence theorem, if partial sums are increasing, so which means that the sequence of partial sums is monotonic, and if it is bounded, then it converges, right? So if the, the series B n converges, right? So then any finite partial sum of A n is smaller. On the other hand, any finite partial sum of the series BN is smaller than the infinite sum, right? So which gives us an estimate for partial sums, estimate, yeah, an estimate for partial sums 
of the series S and from above. Well, from below, it's kind of clear that it's, it's just zero, right? So uh, the, the sequence of partial sums of the series A is bounded and monotonic, so it converges. Well, and um, you know, um, the, the other part of the test, if the, the series BN diverges and AN is even bigger than, than BN, then basically this approach is infinity, right? So anything that is bigger than that cannot approach any finite number because, you know, if it did, then it would mean that the finite number is bigger than infinity, which doesn't make sense. So, um, okay, so the theorem is proved. Now, how do we apply the, the, this theorem? And here is how. Basically, in order to apply the, this theorem, you need to develop some kind of intuition of whether the answer should be yes or no, whether the, the series that, that you are looking at converges or diverges, and, well, um, depending on whether it converges or diverges, you will want to estimate it from above or from below by something familiar. Well, here is the, the first example. Now, how do we develop the intuition? So the intuition is as follows. In the numerator, we have a constant. In the denominator, we have two, right? So which kind of hints us that uh, this is something like P series, Um, with p equals 2, right? So because the, yeah, basically in the numerator, we it's just a constant. And well, the whole thing looks like, well, strictly speaking, it's times 5 over 2 because there are constants. Okay, so let us see. And we know that the p-series converges. So the assumption here is that our series also con converges, right? And basically we want to compare it with the p-series where p equals 2, right? So let me write 5 over 2n square plus 4n plus 3. It should be bigger than or equal, sorry, it should be smaller than or equal because my conjecture is that the, the series converges since um, it is should be similar to the series 1 over n squared and that one converges, right? So we know that the series, the, this series converges. Okay, so we want to apply convergence of the familiar series to, to prove the convergence of the new series. So which means that the estimate should be less than or equal to. Okay, um, now, if we want to estimate from above, it means that we want to change the terms of our series to make them bigger. Well, but how do I change a fraction to make it bigger? To make a fraction bigger, I need to make denominator smaller. So, which means that if I remove something from my denominator, it makes the denominator smaller, which makes the whole fraction bigger, right? So basically, if I write this, it is going to be correct, right? So this is because since 2n square plus 4n plus 3 is bigger than 2n square plus 4n plus 3. Well, bigger than or equal to, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's strictly speaking, it is strictly bigger. Right? On the other hand, I know that this series converges. Well, I can take 5 over 2 out, and this is going to be my P series. So th this series converges. So, and since I was able to estimate terms of my series from above by terms of a series that I know to converge, it means that the answer here is it converges. But notice that it's it's kind of, so the answer is that this series converges, but the tricky part here is that sometimes 
if if you have a question um, about serious convergence, then, then then sometimes you can um, you know get a correct answer by an incorrect method, and it's somewhat easy to, to make a mistake because there are just two possible answers, converges or diverges, but there are a lot of different methods. And sometimes even the, the same question can be solved by using many different methods. And sometimes it is even possible to make a mistake and arrive to, an, to a correct conclusion, right? So you, you've, you've got to be careful. All right. Um, so that was the uh, printed solution. Now, here is another series, ln n over n. Does it converge or diverge? So here, the, the problem is that there is a logarithm n in the numerator, and we haven't really seen anything like that. But uh, have we seen something like this without the ln n, right? So here, uh, instead of developing an intuition, so let us try to to think about whether we have seen something like this, but without ln n. And without ln n, it's just 1 over n, right? Well, okay, so... And we know that this series diverges, right? So if, if, you, if you just try it... The series from one to infinity, one over n. This is the harmonic series, and we know that it diverges. Well, on the but now, if we know what to compare to, then basically uh, we can figure out the answer, right? So because um, ln n, well, ln n is almost always positive, right? So except for the case when n equals one. So we know that our series is actually bigger than 1 over n, well, 4 when n is at least 2, All right? Well, um, so in other words, what we get is something almost like what, what we know. So the, the only difference is that we need to compare the our series, that, that we don't know whether it converges or diverges, to the harmonic series only start that, that, that starts with 2 rather than than one. But of course, if you start at a different position, it's still going to diverge. So the at which position it starts doesn't, doesn't matter. So which means that our series still diverges. By the way, the, the first term, so notice that if um, th this is just zero, when n equals one. So by starting from, from two, we don't really change it because the, the first term is, is just zero. Okay. So we know that the harmonic series diverges and terms of our series can be estimated from below by the terms of the harmonic series, which means that our series also diverges. Again, it is important that in order to prove divergence, we need to estimate from below. So the inequality should be bigger than or equal to. In order to prove convergence, we need to estimate from above. So the inequality should be less than or equal to. So for divergence, should be like this. For convergence, should be less than or equal to. All right. And how do you find series that you are going to compare the unknown series to? Well, basically, the source of possible examples are geometric series and P-series, essentially. Um, and that, that's basically it. 